will be in English today. Um, welcome, my uh, talk about Freedom Internet, but only uh, I will go into a bit of depth on the last year, what we did with Freedom Internet, but the main part of the talk is about the craziness of the fiber industry in the Netherlands and the wars that's going on in that area and the crazy things that are happening there. Um, I like to make it a bit uh, interactive uh, session, so if you have any questions in between, just pop it and we'll go in, into it. And most importantly, I have a prize. I have a very nice uh, beach towel with Freedom Internet. So the person that asked the most funny or good question today wins this towel. Uh, I'm the jury, no correspondence about it, so... <laughs> So, remember that. Okay, fiberware in the Netherlands. Uh, first, who the fuck am I? Um, because usually, yeah, there's a question already. You never know. <laughs> um, just, uh, we'll not go too into depth of this, but uh, who am I for persons that never have uh, seen me or heard me before? Um, I started out as a software engineer in the medical area. Uh, later, I went working for Access for All, Dutch internet provider. Then I became an investor, entrepreneur, owned companies in very different uh, branches, ICT, but also shipping, different things. And um, in 2019, there was a big wahala about uh, Access for All disappearing as a unique provider in the Netherlands. There was a, a, a group, Access for All mu Must Stay, it means in English. Uh, I was part of that, and then I was asked from that group to uh, help start a free internet as an alternative to Access for All, and there we went off. So we there's and we are a couple of years further. And what have we done last year? Well, a couple of things, small uh, things. So we do a little bit back to last year. Um, we growth was an important theme for last year. Can we grow? We need more customers. We need more. Uh, 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 people around, we, uh, we have to enlarge our footprint to get more customers because we are a mission-driven company. Uh, we want to invest in, in uh, better internet, uh, free and open internet, open source, all those things, but we can only do that if we earn money with enough customers. So we have to grow. So also commercially, we have to make sure that happens. Uh, so growth was a big theme for last year. Um, for that, you do have to do marketing. So we bought a bus, and sadly, this bus should have been standing here on the outside. Uh, there's a, another little Volkswagen bus, and on the other side, this one had to be standing there, but um, it broke down. <laughs> <laughs> the battery, uh, it's, it's the, the starting battery, so it's not a big thing, but it prohibited me from driving the thing over here. So maybe next year, if you come back, we'll be here with the bus. Uh, but we use this bus uh, because we, we, one of the big things we are involved in is the glass fiber uh, outroll in the Netherlands. And there are a lot of parties, different companies, putting glass into the ground. And a lot of uh, cities where that happens, you have uh, markets of information nights about glass fiber, telling people what is the difference between DSL or coax, what they have now. And for that, we use that bus for marketing purposes. We did a lot of more on our mission activities. Uh, we have a court case running against uh, the, well, the EU decided last year that in March, that was when the war started in Ukraine, that suddenly providers had to block websites out of the blue. And it was a side effect because what they wanted is that the, the, some uh, uh, TV streaming, uh, TV services, wa was not allowed to broadcast anymore in Europe. And they said, oh, but at the last moment they thought, okay, but a TV is also can also be streamed, so we also, also have to block the sites. And that had a huge effect. What happened then is because we just got a list, we had to block, <coughs> because otherwise you're illegal, but now, and it but paved the way to just add sites any moment to that list, and which actually happened in June. Uh, so we said, okay, uh, you can have e extreme measures that you have to block sites for whatever reason, but make sure we have a democratic uh, uh, area, then do it the proper way. 
the proper way and not just by political moves, blog websites. So that's a court case we have running. We are uh, running a uh, program where we try to see is there possible to have alternatives for big tech in education, primary schools and stuff, because every child in the Netherlands when you are, well, I think five years old or something, you are surprised with a Google account. Here you are. Uh, if, if you're looking at your Microsoft account, here you are. Um, and we think that could, should be different. It's not good that we have children at that age, uh, vulnerable, uh, and already uh, pumped in with the values of Microsoft and Google. So we're looking at alternatives there. That's a coalition we do. We have a privacy coalition where we're active in. That's also a bit of lobby. Can we do uh, be things better also in government and things that's going on? Uh, and Privacy Collective is a court case going on to um, Super Cookies building by Oracle and Salesforce. They own uh, cookie companies that are very good in uh, combining. You have cookies, of course, everybody has cookie, but what they do is they combine information from cookies, make super profiles, sell them to highest bidder for online advertising. And actually, Oracle is one of the companies of this world that has the largest database of user information profile information in the world. We all think it's Google. They have even more. So that's a, a thing that is going. And we are very big supporters of none of your business from Austria. Uh, some people from Europe know Schrems, uh, the things, well, that's where he comes from. So we support that heavily. So we work in that area. And we introduce new services, like in Dutch you call it bell bundles, uh, call bundles, how mm -hmm. you call it. Because this was, this Crazy thing, um, a lot of clients were requesting, ah, you, you do VoIP calling, but we have to pay per minute. I want to have a bundle so I can have my costs fixed. And we were requesting for that, and we were requesting for that, and we said, okay, okay, we build it. So we build it, almost no customer takes it. <laughs> so it's a bit weird, eh? a lot of requests from it, but in the end, it's, it's not a big thing. So, okay. So I don't know yet which lesson we learned from this. <laughs> Do we ha not have to listen to our customers or so? But maybe we should have done better research on that one. Um, another thing, and that was a unique deal because we are the first uh, consumer provider in the Netherlands where you can get a subnet. Um, uh, in that, uh, <laughs> and in an, uh, we all customers can request, of course you have to pay for that, a slash 29. Uh, and as for consumers, that is no provider at the moment in the Netherlands that offers that. Business-wise, you can, but on consumer level, you can't, usually. So um, that is a unique service, and that is, was very popular. So that, that went very well, and, uh, we, have, and we still, uh, yeah, that, this, yeah w in our community, this is a popular product. So if you need a, a subnet at home, come to us. Appearing was a big, big uh, issue this year. Um, <laughs> so we did a lot of extra appearings because we had to have better traffic routes and things. So uh, we had expanded that much more. So we had better traffic, lower latencies. So appearing was a big aspect of our development this year. And of course, we won again the best uh, all in one co uh, consumer provider award of the Cosmetics. Sorry? Well, that's something I want to go in. No, we, 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 can't, we can't pay for that because it's, it's clients out there that have to voluntarily... Uh, no. But what you have to do, because the consument bot is a smart organization, they charge you money to be able to use that logo. So you win it, they say, oh, you've won, and that's something I cannot influence. But then it said, but if you want to use it on your website, you have to pay me 8,000 euros for the coming three months. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, you want to use it on television? That's 80,000 euros. 80,000 euros. Okay. Uh, uh, radio commercials is, is less. It's, uh, in, for the 8,000 euros we pay, we can use it in, uh, on billboards, websites. And now billboards, I don't think so. I think that's an extra 5,000 euros or something. <laughs> um, so 
It's a very commercial model of the consumenta bond. That's the consumer advisory testing board. So it's a very good commercial model. Um, I wish I invented that. <laughs> uh, uh, also very important this year was the enor enormous pressure on our support desk. Uh, we get a lot of uh, questions from, from uh, by mail and by phone, uh, more than we almost can handle. Um, uh, also, a lot of processes internally are not super optimized yet. We, we've been building our company quite quickly, quite fast, so some things are too much handwork. Uh, so we have to automate more things so we can lower the pressure on the support desk. And the fun part is the, these three guys you see here in the picture, they're sitting there. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, but he's hidden. <laughs> he's anonymously. So, um, uh, and, and to be able to, to work that all, all this, this, this yeah, pressure and load, uh, we organize what we call tickathons, where all people from all the whole company will join in to uh, help customers with tickets. And we do that in the evenings as extra sometimes. And we uh, are working on a complete new network uh, scheme. We currently, we are based in NICAF, that's in a data center in Amsterdam. We have stuff there. Uh, we have some servers in uh, Cellnext Amsterdam. That's the tower, if you drive on the A10. There you see a tower standing in Cellnext. There we have some servers. Sorry? Yeah, next to that location, yeah. So we could carry uh, stuff uh, just yeah. across the road. So there we are, and we are adding a second uh, data center to that, and that is in Equinix. And we have our own dark fiber ring between Equinix, Celnex, and Nikhev to to better be better uh, with with uh, uh, yeah. We want to have more locations so we have better uptimes. So that's being rolled out now. This is Iron testing some new switches, whatever. I had a nice diagram of that that. Um, uh, network layout, but for some reason I couldn't find it on my laptop. <laughs> so that I owe you that one for next time. Um, for that we also need a lot of money. Um, money was running short. So what we did last year in November, we did a third round of crowdfunding, uh, which we announced in uh, an uh, event in uh, Harlem, in the Philharmonie. And uh, we raised uh, that month uh, one and a half million euros to grow even further in our community. So if you were part of that uh, crowdfunding, thank you very much. Um, so that is basically the most what we did last year. But what is going on is a big fiber war in the Netherlands. And we are in the middle of that because we new customers, the most of the new customers we get are people that are getting less fiber in their homes. And so how does this whole fiber thing works then? Uh, of course, you have at first you have layer one. And layer one, what we call, is just the, the cable stuff in the ground. And there you have the, the big companies, which will come to later, that are putting stuff in the ground. And they all want to be the biggest. And they all want to have the most households. And if we, you count them all together, they are, because they all have plans to uh, give so many, many homes less fiber that if you all put their plans and you add it all up, we have either to build a million houses in the Netherlands or people get two or even more fibers in their home. Um, second, uh, we call it layer two, is uh, the uh, people that, yeah, that put light on, their, on, the, on the fiber, uh, so they have uh, the OLTs and, and the equipment in the, in the pops, the points of presence, that, uh, where everything comes together. Um, then a third, we, internet service providers, they're giving people the internet over that fiber and connecting them to the rest of the world through our core routers and stuff. That's basically the layers. Uh, how have we built that? And then it gets complicated. Um, this is a picture of uh, where we are. So we are on the top because we are layer three. We are the internet service provider. Clients connect to us. And then we use different parties, different companies that do the layer two. And then you have the green. That's all the where we are currently connected to. 
uh, the or when it's light green are currently building a connection to um, uh, people that put are putting fiber in the ground already have put fiber in the ground and what you see is sometimes that you have uh, like we have here KPN Rega fiber there in the green um, that's the old stuff that KPN used to do when they uh, started out with, with fiber and you have different parties we work together to put uh, layer two there. Um, so it's sometimes very difficult to tell where, eh, if you order with us, from which line it will go. Uh, but I come back to that later. But it, you see there already here a lot of different fiber companies. Uh, a couple of big ones, which I come to later as well, and a lot of small ones, because this list is far from complete. There's still a lot, a lot of fiber corporations or companies putting in some regions fiber into the ground or already have fiber into the ground. And our goal is to connect to them all. It's going to be a long list. Um, the latest count I did, we have around 40 different fiber uh, initiatives or companies with fiber in the ground in the Netherlands. Huge chaos. Um, and the, the original from that is very simple because the big companies, KPN, um, was long time not putting any fiber in the ground because they were cash cowing their copper network, the DSL network. They want to cash cow it as much as possible. So they were delaying the whole fiber things. And in the area, the remote areas of the country where the fiber infrastructure and other infrastructure was very bad, people decided on their own, let's do it ourselves. So they made uh, local initiatives, they put fiber into the ground, with in often with corporations, with all the people working there, and so you have a lot of local initiatives. But there's a hard time because putting it into the ground and, uh, and then getting people on it is one thing, but then maintaining it in the long run is often very difficult because it's often owned by um, non-profit organizations or by volunteers or whatever, and you see that is a problem that you see many more of these being built by the larger ones, or being bought, sorry, by the larger ones. I'll come to that later as well. Uh, roughly two architectures being rolled out. In the old things, we have a point-to-point -point architecture where every household, in effect, has his own fiber to the, the point of present, the pop. Um, Lately, you see more and more uh, companies rolling out in PON ar uh, architecture, where you have splitters in areas to, so you have usually what one, behind one splitter there are 32 households. Um, reason for PON, because usually people said, ah, but this is much better, because you have some sharing there. Um, the reason for PON is usually it's cheaper to roll out, and another Positive point of it is uh, much more energy effective because you need less, less switches, you need less power, you need so on, also on operating is much cheaper. So all, uh, if you look uh, 10 years back, it was all this architecture. If you look now, it's all that. So. And speeds are being is. But the big problem is KPN. Um, KPN. And I cannot go an hour on, on this one, but I won't. Uh, KPN is the largest party in the Netherlands. But um, what is a big problem is because KPN is not only doing uh, fibers in the ground, but they're also selling themselves to consumers. Um, we can buy access to their network, and we get a price for that to access. The problem is, I think, that those prices are very, very high. So it's almost impossible to keep with themselves. And sometimes the price that I have to pay to get access to a certain address is higher than they, their own retail price, which is not so good. And it gives you an enormous disadvantage as a small provider to get access uh, and to get a position in the market. So it, ga it gives you an unequal playing field. Um, there's one institute in the Netherlands, the ACM, Authority of Consumer Market 
short for ACM short, that uh, says, because KPN is a big company, says uh, you have to uphold some rules to do that. It used to be very good rules. That is, was in uh, uh, March 2020. A judge said the rules are not go; th they must be gone. So there were no rules anymore. And the ACM said last year, okay, we're going to do have new rules for fees for third parties in the market. So we, they investigated, they interviewed all the com uh, companies, including us, how we look at it, and they wanted to do a report on that and a, uh, a new law on it for maintaining prices for them. And that was end of March, April, that would be the case. But then KPN, they a super good, cool trick. It's, oh, it's not po you ha don't have to do that. We do a voluntary offer to the market. So in April, they came with a voluntary, right? and Dutch, that heet toezeggingsbesluit, voluntary offer, and look who go how good it is. And uh, we do it for eight years minimum. And the ACM said, oh, that looks good. Great. And then the provider said, oh, wait, we haven't looked at it yet even. We, e we don't know if it's good. So, uh, and I looked at it, and at the first point, when I saw it for the first time, I think, this is a good offer. This is in line with the smaller networks, with other networks, where we pay, let's say, 20 euros a month for a gigabit. Now we get, uh, get in line with that. Now we can offer good prices for the consumers, reasonable prices. But then you start looking into the document itself, because then you really look at it, and there are all kinds of hidden costs. Ah, then you said, okay, um, but if I don't want to go to that location, what? oh yeah, but then you also have to hire in that pop a uh, space in the in rec space. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, but the rack space is initial setup is 20,000 euros. Yeah, and it's 165 uh, uh, areas where you have to do that. 165, 165 times 20,000 euros setup fee. That's a lot of money already. And you haven't done anything yet. Oh, but you also have to have, yeah, you have to buy space in the switches. And we do that per, per thousand, and you have to pay 100,000 euros per thousand uh, clients for seven years, and then you have to renew it. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah, um, but you also have to hire back, uh, backbones to these locations from us, and it's so much per month. And then it adds, and it adds, and it adds, and it adds. And then you see, I cannot make, make any good business case on this. There's no, this is not cheaper. This looks cheaper, but it's, with the hidden costs, it's even more expensive than what we have now. So a lot of the uh, providers protested. There came a little uh, adjustment, but marginal. And in the talks what I had and I discussed, I said, guys, I can't do it, anything with this because it's too expensive. And yeah, if, if you're large and um, have enough market share, then with a lot of consumers and splitting costs, then it might be OK. But for a new, smaller party in the market, it's impossible. And they even said themselves in talks like this, yeah, if you don't have a market share of 5% now, yeah, then it doesn't work, of course. So, but how do I get to that market share of 5%? Never, ever. So that was uh, th th this discussion is still going on. And this is s still something we will fight for to make sure that we can have normal prices. But this is a long fight, a very long fight. So. That is, that is how KPN moves. Then uh, we have Glasport, the second large one. They want to do a million. Uh, KPN wants to be five, six million households. They want to do uh, over a million. Uh, Glasport is actually a, a joint venture between KPN, there they are again, and APG, which is a pension uh, uh, investment fund from the Netherlands. And the funny part is that, uh, okay, uh, they, they present themselves a totally different company, but if you have to order it and, and go on it, you have to use the KPN interface. It goes to KPN infrastructure. It, it, it's just KPN. Prices are a little bit better, but the model is exactly the same as what we have there. You have a question? Yeah, the, the question was, why is that possible? How can you possibly say the prices are better? Everything is the same except the name. Yeah. Yeah, 
There's an excellent question, and this is a question I asked and then also. If you ask that to K KPN, of things, they said, yeah, it's a different company. They can make their own prices. Uh, but you know, of course, that their internal uh, rates that they have to pay is much lower than what we have to pay. Uh, there's something going on. And, and the ACM is also looking at Glassport, but it, they, it seems that they not quite get the grip of how it really is going on there. It looks like that. So this is a big one. Um, Delta is, is also a big one. They're, they're, so they started out in remote areas and they're now going more and more into the cities. Um, and they want to do two million households. They are ha already have one million and they want to go to two million households. It's already adding up, eh, the millions. Um, and Delta is owned by private equity. That's also, also something worrying, okay, what's going to happen there on the long run? It's because private equity is not there for the eternity. But okay, it's uh, they, they are funding, they're, they're f I think they are funding already almost 1.8 billion euros to push the, 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 the fiber into the ground. So Delta is, uh, and Delta is funny, because Delta, always in the discussions with the ACM, they were not there because they were too small yet, but they are growing. So they, they s kind of sneak between everything uh, through. And if you look at their price list, and you look at it, he said, this looks pretty the same as KPN. That's interesting. Uh, it's a bit, a few cents more there and a few cents less there, but the end price is almost the same. Um, and then you look through it and you see the whole uh, wholesale department of uh, Delta, and then you find out that it's almost for 80% old KPN employees. So <laughs> I, I guess there's where it comes from. So Delta is no better, no worse than KPN in that respect. So all that I've said of KPN, that we keep on fighting for better tariffs, applies here as well. Um, we are st starting on a Delta network, uh, hopefully March. Um, we're now connecting with them. And we will be the first provider on their network that does IPv6, because currently, we started talking with Delta, I think, two and a half years ago. And I said, yeah, I want to go on, on your network, but I need uh, IPv6. We do PPDOE. We want IPv6. And they said, oh, we cannot do that. Oh, that is difficult. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's a that's nerdy thing. <laughs> they have no clue. Um, and it's also part because all their engineers and software and, and, and hardware, they were all external people hired in and things. They have no re had no real knowledge in the company itself. The, the network of them is also a bit old, messy. They're now upgrading all everything. Uh, they have now some new people in and now we came to the conclusion that we had some people They said, oh yeah, should be possible. Our equipment uh, supports it, so why can't we do it? So we're now testing it. We're rolling it out, so we will be the first IPv6. If they're ever going to do it themselves, I don't know, uh, but we will uh, do it. Then the big question of this company, Open Dutch Fiber. Uh, yes, Open Dutch Fiber, owned by two companies, uh, Dutch Telecom Capital Partners and KKR, KKR being uh, one of the largest private equity funds of the United States, a very large uh, private equity fund. Again, private equity, so what's happening on the long run? Nobody knows. Open Dutch Fiber is interesting. They also want to do a million households, also over a billion uh, euros put in by those two uh, investors. So it's really big money going on here. Funny part is they are a pure uh, layer one company. This, so they don't sell themselves uh, as a provider or doing it. Their tariffs are good. So they prove it can be done. They're very good, it can be done. But the problem is they did something very, very, very weird. Um, they're rolling out and then they said, okay, in every city where we go and where we make a new uh, pop, the first year only, oh, and that's why I call it close station, the only company that's allowed to come there is T-Mobile. So what's open about it? Nobody knows. Nobody can explain. So the first year, T-Mobile has an exclusive right on that area, of that city, that region. 
Of course, I'm not so happy with that. So I'm trying to uh, make sure that it changes. But it's also going to be a long battle. Um, what we're now seeing, we expect to start doing the first area uh, cities and, and, and areas that where they are uh, starting, I think, around July, we start delivering there. So, yeah, we are connecting with, connecting with them. Um, uh, but it's still only the areas that are longer than a year available already for clients, for consumers. Um, but I said, okay, let's first be able to connect even, and then in that areas, and then now we'll fight for it furthermore to break that yeah, unequal idea that the first year only T-Mobile. It's a weird thing. And that's why I call it closed stitch fiber. Um, they're not happy with that, that I call them that. Um, I, I showed this, this uh, logo, closed stitch fiber, in another talk in, in Harlem, what I saw. And there was somebody in the, in the audience that took a picture of that. And two days later, I was in the office of T-Mobile in The Hague. And the uh, chief strategy officer of uh, T-Mobile saw me, he came to me, I said, I saw that picture. <laughs> <laughs> it went completely viral within T-Mobile. That was funny. So uh, also in, in, uh, in Open Edge Fiber, but they know exactly how we think about it and all the providers also, uh, but so far we have not any success to break that closed edge fiber uh, thing. And <coughs> to make it even more complicated, um, in the Netherlands you had Cambrium, a company, and they had a provider called Tweak. Who f are people from the, the no Tweak? Customers of Tweak? Okay. You're a customer? Pay attention. Why do you think I'm here? Yep. Because what happened? Uh, Cambrium. And, and Cambium, I, I, I love the co company Cambium because when we started out in 2020, we had uh, we started out with nothing, and they helped us getting on uh, as a as an ISP. Uh, Gerrit, the owner of Cambium, uh, loved us. He said, "I'm going to help you a bit." So the, uh, they helped us start up. So good guys. We worked nicely together with them. Uh, but then what happened? It's over a year ago, they were bought by eFiber. And eFiber is a network that's putting fiber into the ground. And uh, a, f a network where we also deliver, which is, is also a pure layer one company with good rates uh, that we can, uh, we did for 49 euros uh, gigabit connections. This also we only do gigabit connections with them because that's the fun part. Uh, if, if you connect, uh, a client to uh, on fiber. The and in the end you put just a cable in the switch. The switch ports on the things are all gigabit. So if you, as a company that says you can also have 100 megabit or 200 download uh, in the fiber, it's is these. You have to do bandwidth throttling. So the funny part is that you have to ha spend more money to get less bandwidth. So that's, technically, it's totally yeah. insane. It's pure marketing. How we can get more money for that gigabit. And then there are talks about, yeah, but if you get more bandwidth, then you have more traffic. That's bullshit. Uh, people, if you, if you have 200 uh, MB or a gigabit, my, I'm sorry, Netflix won't go any faster. <laughs> so it's complete bullshit. Um, OK, back to this story. What's the sidestep? E-fiber. OK, uh, so I asked, OK, what's going to happen? And everybody said, no, nothing can happen. Everything goes on as normal, and which actually happened. Just Cambrian just stayed as the they did. Uh, E-fiber, why they actually bought Cambrian, nobody knows. Very weird decision, but they did. Uh, but then something weird happened, because uh, open niche fiber, they had a strategy, okay, we put our own fibers in the ground, but we also want to grow faster, so we buy e-fiber. Because then we have suddenly have 400,000 households extra. Okay, that was interesting. But then open it, fiber said, yeah, but we are strict, we do only layer one. We don't want to have a provider, so we buy the infrastructure of e-fiber, but we don't buy Cambrium. So what happens now with Cambrium? Then, 
And ISP and Lens said, ah, but that's a string. Give it to me. So T-Mobile said, for me. And now is an interesting thing going on. Because Cambium did two things. They were a, pro uh, a tweak is a provider. You can have your ISP there. You can have your internet connection there. But what they also did is they are a layer two company, an operator, as we call that. We are one of the customers on that. Eh? We do a, a part of eFiber network through Cambrium, as where they do the layer two services, and we do a part of uh, KPN Regafiber with through them. And now T-Mobile said, yeah. But that point, that operator point, that we want to do ourselves. Let's stop with Cambrium doing that. This, there's, in the end, not going to be much left of Tweak or Cambrium, sadly. <coughs> so uh, welcome to T-Mobile. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, uh, yeah, they can do anything. Yeah, well, if they, they, uh, well, what, what you often see, of course, is that that ISPs that want to grow, if you want, if you want to sell yourselves and you have more uh, market share, then your price go up. So it's also leverage for them, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. You see that lots of shifts going on, and, and, and it's, it's a real uh, thing. The big problem, what I already said in the beginning, is that there are the plans of all those large companies, and especially KPN, Glassport, Delta, and Open Niche Fiber, are so, uh, so large, it, the country is too small. So um, in the streets where you are, you see now there are, uh, I know already of a few places and cities where there are two fibers in the ground, so you get two fibers in your, in your house. There's even one in, in uh, North Oost Groningen, Stadskanaal. Anybody know Stadskanaal? Uh, <laughs> three. <laughs> I work on the newest fiber over there. And this is, of course, a waste of money you won't believe. A really, resources, money down the drain. And and the point is, they, they are so highly competitive, they don't allow each other on their cables. They don't even want it. So they're, they're fighting over it. So, and this is over it. The, the, there's a famous uh, one in uh, The Hague, in, in uh, Segbroek, where KPN and T-Mobile were fretting with Primevest, uh, where they then were investor in. Doesn't exist anymore. Uh, they were fighting. Um, so that's Canal 3, that's Delta, KPN, and uh, SKV, a local uh, uh, initiative. So, uh, residents complaining at the they have to open up the street like two or three times because yeah. they, they, they don't care. Open up the more yeah, the they don't care. But l l let's be honest, uh, opening a street uh, for most of the time is fairly quickly. Uh, within a day, they can go through a street. That part through the street running, uh, but the, the, the most work is putting it in your house. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it goes very quickly. Question. Do you know of any municipalities that have plans to take over this uh, layer one phase? So they say all the providers have to patch into our pops and stop uh, opening up the street uh, three times and put three, three cables. No, I only know a few uh, municipalities that, that did f they said decided we're going to do it ourselves. Famous is Harderwijk. We have Kai Harderwijk, you have uh, Helmond. Um, yeah, so uh, th they said, okay, we do it ourselves with the, the, uh, the city council and, uh, pardon my French, fuck off KPN and all the others. Yeah? D so do you support initiatives like this? Uh, is there anything? For sure. We, we are one of the providers in Helmond, for example. Um, we uh, were talking with Harderwijk whether there were some technical difficulties, but we are trying to solve that. IPv6 was one of the problems. <laughs> um, uh, but you so also see, for example, that in Venray, in, in, uh, in Limburg, uh, there was the same thing, and now you see that KPN is slowly taking that over. So you also see sometimes if it's, it depends on how powerful they have set it up, but sometimes they see they just give up. But I hope, but Mede Brabant, Glasse, our locals, we, we gladly are provider, uh, much more of those, there are lots of those. Um, 
But the fun part is, because all these different companies are putting gables in the ground, and, and we have different uh, layer two, that what we said is, OK, if you put a postal code uh, you want to order with us, uh, then th you might get a lot of options. But we said we, we don't do any favors. We don't give any uh, layer one or layer two company uh, exclusive rights. And they try, yeah, because when we tried to do the contract, for example, with Delta, they said, yeah, we, you may have a contract, but if there's a, a household where we live, we want to be the exclusive party where you, what you offer. And they said, no, I can't do that. My name is Freedom Internet. We are open, transparent company. Transparency is important. So, guys, you created the problem by doing overbuild. Then we offer both. Yeah, but then there might be a price difference. You created that problem. <laughs> so, and so far, I've gone away with it. So, KPN, Delta, and OpenH Fiber, they all said, okay, that's fine. Uh, not with everyone, but we, we got away with it. And I, I really fought for that. So, uh, we got away with it. So, but for sometimes for uh, consumers, it's not easy. Uh, you have too much choices. But that's part of our business model, I guess. Yeah, question. Yeah, so. Um uh, the two major parties, from what I heard from you, is, uh, uh, well, basically KPN and equity. Um, so what is going to happen if equity, for example, managed to take over KPN? And, um, well, what kind of impact would that, would that have for free? I, I, I don't think that equity, which is the owner of Delta, ever buy, can buy KPN, because then probably the ACM will step in because then you get a too large uh, powerhouse in the Netherlands. So I don't think that ever will happen. It's it sooner maybe the only one rate that KPN tries to buy Delta, but also I think that is almost impossible for them. So I, I, it's very likely that, for example, an, a foreign company will buy the, then Delta. But in the end, it's guessing. Well, I was just actually really curious about, so I was just Googling a bit, and I saw like about two years ago, Equity was actually trying to acquire KPN. Yeah, but won't they won't, no, it's, it's almost impossible. Happen. Yeah. Okay. Because you. ACM will guard for a too large party uh, in the Netherlands, an American mark macht in the Dutch. Yeah. So that is the, the yeah, that is what we, uh, we uh, yeah, what we have to do then. Uh, and with you see, can, uh, it's a bit small. Sorry for that, but you see also the, the price effect. So if you we can, and this is a, 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 a household where we can deliver uh, on network KPN through uh, Fiber Crew. That's one of the um, layer two companies, and we can for 51 euros give you a gigabit. Okay, or even uh, 49 if you do your own modem. Or uh, sorry, router. Um, but if you do that with KPN. You, for the same price, you get 50 Mbits. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'll give you a little secret. Our margin on the upper one is higher. I will give you a little, little insight. What, what do we earn on, uh, for a KPN here? What is, what is our take here? I think we earn six euros a month. And for that, uh, we have to do support, deliver you, uh, send you the router and an and, and, uh, engineer to set it up maybe, uh, and we have to earn it all back. So this, that one is a bad business case. So uh, think about that. Then we know how what KPN charges. Um, focus for 20 to next this year. Um, because we need some focus. Uh, what are we going to do this year uh, to make all those things uh, happening and what are we going to do in this fiber war? Um, well, we are, we'll continue to expand our footprints. Uh, as I said earlier, we try to, if there is fiber in the ground, because DSL is dead. Um, this year is really starting to switch off DSL and it will be going quickly, quicker and quicker the coming years. Uh, this month actually is the first large project of switching of copper in lots of areas. February 22nd is D-Day for that, for a lot of households. So, um, so we're looking at really at, at uh, fiber, and if there is fiber, we try to be there. 
is difficult. Question? Discontinuing the uh, DSL just for the last mile or the entire uh, service as it is? Entire service as this in the end. So they are, they are planning to do in the coming years to switch off the complete DSL footprint in the Netherlands. I think they're a bit optimistic about the time frame. <laughs> I know many places that don't carry fiber, but they still carry DSL. Yes, but th that's, um, there's discussion about it, so I, I think it will take some time before we did there. But in some areas, they really they want to just get the whole Dislams out of the, the pops. Ziggo, um, like Ziggo is, is a mystery to me. Um, when when we started, we had a uh, I I, wa I was trying to get also a deal with Ziggo to go to their networks, mm -hmm. and we had a uh, concept contract even for that. And then, uh, as I said earlier, in March 2020, there was a uh, court case where uh, the the judge said the judge said from the High Council uh, because there was pressure from the ACM that also um, Ziggo should give uh, access to their networks from other parties. And then the judge said, no, that's not necessary. They don't have to do that. And then Ziggo said, ah, that's nice. <laughs> Throw all contracts in his, nobody allowed. It's our network. So there is still, an, and, but Ziggo is weird because, um, of course, they have a large fiber footprint because uh, they have fiber to all the uh, local. They try to sell the 90% fiber. Yes, they sell it now as a fiber coax network or something. <laughs> because the last part is still coax, and that's not going to be There's still room for the improvement in DOCSIS, I think, uh, but it's, it's stretching and stretching and stretching. But I don't know what they're going to do, because at when, when the, uh, the in the end, every household in this country will have fiber. So what they're going to do? I don't, I'm not sure. that I have seen no movement there. To, uh, you, you first. Why was it is an issue with the ASL, uh, that you have multiple cables in the ground? The ASL is only one cable. Yeah, but why is it's now an issue, but why wasn't it with the ASL that you have multiple cables? In your house. In your house. Why was there only one provider of the copper? Because when? The copper the copper went into the ground when the you came in until uh phone after that? Yeah. So from from day one that that there was always uh, uh, KPM from still one did also what they call wholesale for third parties, uh, so they never did. And uh, there, there was a ruling from the court that they also had from ACM said you have to give access to uh, third parties. And but th and the whole problem started when in March 2020 Ziggo won their case. The side effect was that KPN also didn't have to do it anymore. That's why there's now so much fight. Uh, but KPN didn't stop the wholesale activities, because it's one of their largest, there's a very large business model for them. Uh, but the tariffs are free. They are pretty much free now. And we, we try to squeeze that back again, but it's a very difficult uh, task. So, yeah. yeah uh, sorry for the non-Dutchies. Uh, zeg maar, ik heb dit verhaal aangehoord en één vraag blijft. Als je stroompartijen hebt, ja. En die, die moeten opgebroken worden, want ze kunnen niet en het netwerk en het product leveren. Ja. Hoe, hoe kan KPN dan en laag 1, en 2, en 3 leveren? Dat is een heel goed vraag. En eigenlijk denk ik dat dat een van de problemen is. Want wat je ziet is dat al die netwerken in daar, die niet doen zelf uh, retail services, daar is geen probleem. En tariffs zijn goed. You see it with Delta, you see it with, with KPN. There you see the problem. They are, you, you're competing with them. Uh, so um, this is something I hope one day will change, that you split the services from infrastructure. Uh, but that's going to be a long way if it all ever will happen here. Because the, the lobby power of KPN, I think, is too big for that. No, in this case not. Yeah. Well, on paper, we are dealing with KPN Wholesale, which is a different entity than KPN, and there's a Chinese wall in, uh, in the middle. Uh, for uh, one anecdote uh, is that when I tried in the beginning, when we started with Freedom, 
I went to KPN also because I wanted to have a contract for KPN because most customers in the beginning came from Access for All and they were all in KPN network, so I needed access to that network. And KPN also said, ah, freedom. No, 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 we're not allowed to give you a contract. Upper hand. Um, later on, that changed. Then they saw that we are really doing it. They said, no, no, no. And then they came to us. And so we are now on better speaking terms with wholesale. But um, sometimes that Chinese wall is less Chinese, I think. Uh, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me come. Uh, you, you had a question? Yeah, come. Ah, yeah, it's working. Well, I was thinking about the whole story you told, but you really need the political. I know I'm a, f a, f a former member of parliament. This was one of my uh, things. I said you have to split the network from yeah. the. Uh, they didn't listen to me, but. Maybe now you need a new uh, people in Parliament to do the suggestion again, because yeah. I think the only I stopped KPN from uh, getting bought by the guy from Mexico because I said, okay, then we uh, make sure that uh, everybody in the Netherlands needs uh, an, an verbinding from so few yeah. uh, Mbit. So uh, that's why K KPN had to invest in their network and then they were like okay we don't want to do that so but that was a political issue so it's not a question well my question is how uh how good are you with your lobby because kpn is very good i know yeah how good are you um never good enough i think um but what we what we will what we are doing is of course lobbying together with nl connect nl connect is a branch uh, for internet service providers so we, uh, they're uh, lobbying, uh, and we do it together, because I'm only one. Uh, we have some direct contacts with uh, some uh, parliament members. Uh, I'm talking with this. Uh, I know if you know, Hind Decker is uh, one of the persons I'm talking with this. Um, um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's still a long way. Let, let, let me show you that. But yeah, we're full on it, and we go keep on pushing on it. So, uh, where was I? Okay, footprint. Um, well, what are we talking about? We keep on pushing the fight with KPN, Delta, and the ACM. Politically, any way we can, we will push that fight. Um, one important thing for us is finding a better uh, television solution. Uh, we'll not go, go into much detail of it, but uh, uh, we want something better. Uh, not so easy, but we'll, we are working on it. Um, we are looking into more uh, business services, so for uh, small and medium-sized companies uh, to add services for that. Uh, we, we start developing this year, so it won't be anytime soon, but we are starting developing that. Uh, and for one of my favorite projects what I, is, is uh, a, a, a project what we started a pilot in uh, the provincy of Groningen, that's in the northern part of the Netherlands, uh, where we are looking at a social internet offer for people uh, with uh, income or uh, digital uh, problems. Uh, it has also to do with income, where we work together with uh, different uh, uh, local and, and, and uh, national initiatives to have give people better internet, uh, uh, better uh, social tariff, with uh, hardware, with education. So uh, we do that in, uh, in uh, the Gemeente Westerkwartier. There's where we start the pilot this year. Um, there's also a pilot in Rotterdam with uh, Ziggo and KPN doing, trying to do the same. But they do it again on a way I said, <laughs> uh, um, we said, OK, uh, we do it in, in areas with, uh, where income is uh, on a social minimum. And we don't care, we don't look if, if there's already internet. And KPN said, we only do it if people don't have internet yet. Success finding them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, so that, but the, in the end, the pilot is done because uh, it's also uh, probably funded with, uh, from uh, the Ministry of uh, Economic, Zizaka, Economic Affairs that it's going to be, a, uh, to the whole country, a program. But we first do pilots and see if we can learn lessons from that. So we, we are very active in that this year. Um, that concludes my talk for tonight, of this evening. So this is Team Freedom. Um, 
very happy uh, doing this all for you, and um, I want to thank you for your uh, attention. And uh, if there are any questions left, it's now your time, or you come afterwards to me. Uh, thanks, a uh, great talk, and uh, I'm a happy uh, customer already many, many years. Uh, Thank you. Sparol and, uh, and Freedom using uh, Jeepon over KPN, one of the first customers ah. in The Hague. Ah. Uh, on an internet, from an internet point of view, what new functionality do you see coming to end users over the next coming years? Uh, as, uh, uh, as services, you mean? Um, now one thing, I, I, I didn't put it in there, and I was doubting if I would put it in there because I don't want to make false promises. But one thing I uh, like to do is uh, Nextcloud. Um, we are looking at a way that all customers get a, a, a Nextcloud uh, account uh, with limited storage, and you can then add your storage. Yeah, not not things, but all on Nextcloud. Um, yeah, the more services that we think of um, that uh, that we can do. Uh, first thing we, we will add is uh, on the calendaring and contacts, which is not there yet. We will start uh, adding that. Um, there we are looking at a much requested feature from our community that's an editor for uh, RDNS. <laughs> 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 um, there's, there's a huge backlog. There's a huge backlog. And um, we will uh, add, but we are very uh easy on saying too much about it because we we've said things in the past because we want to do it and then we get questions every day when's when's done when's done so but we will try to but if you have speci specific wishes uh yeah. there's one thing we decided we won't do that's a shell server <laughs> <laughs> great service one thanks one there you can go yeah, <laughs> yeah here's mr shell server is sitting here I had, a, I had a question. Uh, yeah. Which Equinix are you going to be in? AM6. Oh, nice. <laughs> yep. Uh, first there, and then comes the. Yeah. Um, so we talked about lobbying Dutch Parliament, but isn't there a theme all across Europe where we should all be going to Brussels and demand some better connectivity? And Because uh, we like to complain here in Holland, and it's I guess it's a cultural thing, we like complaining, but if you look at the situation in France or in Germany, it's way, way, way worse yep. uh, when it comes to competition and, and just getting connectivity at all. Yeah, so correct. Any hope there? No. Um because indeed the numbers said that that the um, if you look at Euro uh, Europe that they s indeed see that I if you see the quality of our infrastructure is very high. So I don't think you see much going on there. Um, what one of the reason was that ACM was n happily with the voluntary offer instead of pushing uh, these that they were scared that if they would do that that the European Committee would step in. Uh, there were, uh, you know, so it's it's like, and uh, um, whether that is really true, but there I know from the talks I they were scared for that. So um, I must say I don't see much hope from Europe coming in this area. I see in other areas I see hope from Europe, but not in this area. What the only thing you can say is that the tariffs, if you look at Europe, Europe as a whole that we are on uh, the top five countries in tariffs. Um, but on the other hand, we have also the top five of quality. So I don't think really that there's any help coming from. Yeah. Questions? Um, how big is the legal team of these people? Because <laughs> there's a lot of fights, apparently. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Most valuable player then. <laughs> uh, now yeah, we're small. Uh, 
Uh, but we have to be honest. For example, we, we, uh, when we do the court case with the uh, uh, European Committee, when we went to Europe in Luxembourg to the court there, of course we have a, a lawyer's extra for that. We can't do that on our own self. And we don't do it on our own selves. We have a coalition of providers that do it, and that they all chip in. Uh, so uh, sometimes you can't do it alone. So we s that's why we seek alliances also for those things. Um, with uh, the fight in the ACM and things, of course we have fun part is, good question does, uh, is for example in the fight with the ACM what we are doing, we are working together with L Connect, the branch uh, organization, so, and they have uh, people on it, but one of our parties where we're working together on this matter is T-Mobile. And they have uh, money also for people. So that's funny with T-Mobile. So sometimes you're friends and you're doing for the same cause, and sometimes you're the battling, and that's fine. The enemy of my the enemy of my enemy is my friend, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the second question um, is: there a strategy to get to the normal consumers, besides the the people that need IPv6 and s private subnetting? And what do you mean with the normal? Well, the, the regular consumers, like, I don't know. We're doing, we're doing like all grandma. the way. We're doing that. Uh, l let's be honest. Uh, we are a certain audience here, but if we look at our, our own consumer, I think uh, at least 80% is just a regular consumer that just wants internet. That very, that they have no clue about IPv6 or IPv4, but it's there. But, uh, uh, we... we um, there, since January this year, the law says in the Netherlands, the telecom law, that uh, you have to be able to use your own modem or router. And you don't have to have the supplied stuff from uh, your provider. Uh, with the most companies, like KPN and Delta, I think Delta last said, yeah, we, have, we had one last uh, customer that wanted his own right. You know, there's not... A in our customer, uh, customer base, it's, uh, let's say, 10%, 15% that uses their own stuff. The rest just wants stuff and make it work. Well, anyway. They already use their own equipment without asking their provider. I did that for 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, 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 the consumers that gives us most trouble is the, the, the audience that says, I think I know how to do that. And then, uh, and then, in the end, we are, s uh, are stuck with sending up an rou an, a, a router anyway, and then it suddenly works. So, um, then, well, last question. It, it's it's more of just of a comment that uh, there's a lot of similarities with how uh, the FTTB, uh, FTTH market is in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, I work in the FTTB market. Yeah. Uh, so we have the more lower prices with like. Symmetric gigabit for 15 euro a month, yeah. but uh, that in so that sense that market is impossible to open up and do sp uh, any split in structure because there's too less. The margin isn't big enough for yeah. anyone to come in. But uh, but there's a lot of similarities, and in Denmark we have uh, four different uh, companies that are fighting to uh, get the real estate pieces. Uh, yeah. uh, and one of those is also EQT. Of course, uh, because they have bought the, a lot of up in the Nordics. Yeah. Uh, so they have uh, so everything there is called Global Connect now. So it might be that they just rename Delta to uh, Global Connect uh, NL. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> okay, then to me it's the big question, and if there's still questions left, then come to me afterwards, and then uh, we'll uh, answer that. This big question is: I will un unleash this beautiful towel. And um, um, <coughs> yeah, this is this is this is this is it's a really big one, yeah. And um, I decided that the best question was today, and as as I said earlier, there's no correspondence. It's my decision. Is the question about bribery and where is that? For, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Any questions later, just come to me. Thank you.